Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 163 at scavengerlife.com. We are talking about what's going on in our store this week. We're still talking about this. (laughs) Every week we talk about it. Well, yesterday, last night, we went to an auction. Yes. For probably the first time in... I I can't remember the last time we went to that auction. Four, five, six months. I don't know. It seems like it's been a while. You know, we talk about auctions a lot just because we've been to a lot of auctions, but because we were traveling all summertime and just, uh, we just haven't been going to these auctions. And so it's last night I saw like, it's one of our favorite ones was happening. Yeah. It's like run by this family and it's like, you know, it's all the regulars there. Yeah. I mean, it was funny not being there for a while and going back and being like, oh, everybody's here. <laughs> and, and, you know, and again, I'm not sure what other people's experience of auctions are but this one in particular you know it's inside of like a warehouse yeah and you know everything's laid out on tables yeah and they have a snack bar box lots yeah and it's uh well they have box lots and they have like more you know fancier stuff and furniture right where if you think of auction it's like an auction where they have an individual item and everyone's bidding on that yeah what we like is before they start that, they do box lots. So they have like these, you know, just tables of boxes of just junk. And this is, you know, the stuff again of like someone dies or gets moved to a home care and they take all the person's items and they separate them into boxes yeah. and people bid on those boxes. Yeah. And at first glance, it looks really junky. I mean, it. Yeah. what's funny is we got there early. Yeah, because we always get there early. Yeah, we yeah. get there early to, you got to go through all the boxes and see, you know, in your mind, check off which boxes you want to bid on. It's so much better than like uh, storage wars or, you know, where people are bidding on something they can't actually go yeah. through. This is great. I mean, you know, they you can go there four hours before the auction and yeah. you can go through each box and look at every single item. Yeah, you know? it's great. So what's funny is the first round through, we saw a couple of things that we thought we would bid on. And then we went and got coffee and did some other errands around town. And then we came back and looked again, you know, about an hour before the auction. And we found all this other stuff. It seems like it always happens that yeah. way. Because, you know, you kind of go in there first with like kind of glazed eyes. Like, because it There's is... There's so much stuff. So much. I mean, it's yeah. just, you know, it's kind of great. And I don't know, in, I guess it's not like this in other countries but yeah. here they put everything in there everyone's personal things yeah. old towels yeah. i mean it's just everything. everything and it's great because the assumption is someone's going to make it use of this yeah before the auction we do a second and third round you know going through things and suddenly we start seeing all this other stuff yeah. and it was great and then the auction starts and you know most of these box slots are going for i mean Rarely does any box go for more than twenty dollars. Oh yeah, twenty is on the high end, unless there's some crazy cool thing. That and there's probably wants. about fifty people there. Yeah, you know, half of them are, are regulars. They're the ones that run the thrift shops around. Yeah, or they or they work at the or they have a booth at the uh, the flea market. Yeah, the uh, flea market. What's funny is we'll see people there buying stuff. And then we'll go to the flea market and buy stuff from them. <laughs> so we're like, oh, we know where you got this. But the, but but then the other half of the crowd is just local people who you know just they're, go for fun. They're yeah. curious, or they're, they're there to buy something yeah. cool for their house. But we ended up probably buying more than anybody else there. Yeah, at I, night. I, I, it was funny because sometimes there are those like couples that will come. Like we always joke, the people who like watch storage wars and like came once. And they fill up this huge... They have these, like, rolling grain bins or whatever. And uh, they'll fill up this whole bin and you just watch them and you're like, they're never coming back. And we were those people last night. We filled up this huge bin of boxes. It's mainly just because there weren't a lot of people who were trying to bid stuff up. So, I I mean, I bought some boxes for $5. And that's often the opening bid. And Ryan did... I think about three or four boxes for five bucks. Right. And, you know, and that's incredible if you think about it because, you know, it's like the size of like a, a U-Haul box. Yeah. And there's always at least one thing that's going to sell for yeah. at least $5. At least 5 10 But then there's $15. often a whole bunch more and we'll talk about the kind of stuff that we found in there. 
Yeah, so some of the stuff that we got was... Well, you got a, a tree stand, climbing tree stand ladder. Yeah, thing. you know, a, a hunting You're very stand. excited about yeah. this thing. Well, because I couldn't believe it. I bought it for $5, yeah. and there were I was in a room full of hunters, so I actually have to pull it apart and, and make sure it's in a working order. Yeah. It's a bit of an older one, so maybe these guys just had all the hunting equipment they, yeah, they just don't care. needed, you know. But, um, so you got that. I got a bunch of boxes of kitchen stuff. And it was because there was, like, random stuff, like, hidden inside these boxes um, that just, it looks like most people are like, this looks like total junk, like, junky kitchen, used kitchen stuff. But one box had this, like, whole set of this, like, German uh, ceramic ware. Like, there's a teapot, there's a bunch of plates, there's uh, mugs, and I, the only reason I knew that it was good was... I had sold a mug that had an elephant on it by this German company. It's called, like, Washer Burger or something. And it sold, I think, for, like, $30 for one mug. So I was like, I'm getting this box. It looks like junk. Everybody thinks it looks ugly. So I thought I it looked it. ugly. Yeah, I thought it looked ugly, too. And then so I right. picked up a mug and right. saw what brand it was. So yeah. I got these wine racks. Um, usually I'm just like, oh, whatever, wine racks. But I wanted one for our other house. So basically, I'm getting a wine rack for the other house, and then I'm just going to sell the rest of them because there was like All a these, stack of them. It's really nice oak, like stack. Yeah, they're racks. like stackable racks. So yep. that was. I always love when you can like use part of something for yourself and then just sell the rest yep. and you make back all your money. You know what? And that's the interesting thing too. Anyone that hasn't really experienced the joy of these auctions is that, you know, again, if you're buying someone's household stuff. And there's stuff that we use. So Ryan bought like yeah. a new microwave oh my for five dollars. Jake kept laughing at me this morning because I was like, I use the microwave. It's so yeah. great. Because basically, I bought a brand new microwave. Uh, it said on the back it was manufactured in 2010, so it's modern. It's not from the 80s or anything. For five bucks. And I wanted to replace our microwave for so long because it was just getting, like, really Yeah, crappy. I mean, it's no matter how much it you clean a microwave, it always oh. starts getting, like, a, a radioactive waste in there. Yeah, it's really bad. And then, you know, and, like, there was, like, a toaster in one box. We right. didn't need a toaster, so we're going to give it to the thrift, thrift store. store but, yeah. And it's too cheap to really sell. But there's yeah. all kinds of, you know, there's cutting boards. And, yeah. And, and we've kitted out our house with all kinds oh, yeah. of stuff from these auctions. You totally. Know? So I was thrilled about the microwave. I mean, I bought a whole box of these old Apple uh, computer the uh, manuals. manuals from Apple the, IIe. From the late uh, 70s to early 80s. Now, you know? that was a great box because, again, it just looked like a junky box of books. Not even good books. People are like, these are all computer junky software manuals and to us that stuff is gold right because there are vintage computing geeks who have an apple IIe and they want us to have the original manual so there was a there was like 10 different like manuals that came with you know apple IIe's yep. so that was i loved that box that was five dollars um and then th this was a great one so i bought this one box because it had this um copper and brass set of utensils brand new in the box from like the 80s 70s or 80s and I was like those are great those will totally sell on eBay and um, so I was picking through the box and there's these two heavy duty dance silver plated like spiral candle, candle holders holder, yeah. candle holders for those like tall skinny like floral candles they're called and I didn't uh, those were completely hidden. I had no idea. And that's exactly something that I would buy anyway. So that was awesome. I was like, wow. And then we just got a couple boxes for our Amazon experiment. I'm still, it's making a tub of like brand new in the box yeah. items that we're going to send into Amazon <laughs> FBA. And I got a bunch of stuff like that. Like there was a box of like plumbing stuff yeah. and like heating duct stuff. Yeah. And just these items that are new in the box. New in box with the UPC code. So that, we're like, all right, uh, there's yeah. five or six of those. Just throw them in our Amazon box. Right. And so, it you know, it's just a, a real smorgasbord, you know, of stuff. So there was one box that we really wanted. Oh, yeah. So this box had slide trays full of 
35 millimeter slides. And we've talked about it before. Yeah, I mean, we love finding these because most people, you know, they they basically throw these slides away because, you know, yeah, it's a, what, what's anyone going to do it's with a, them? So it's someone's family yeah. and vacation settings, but they sell really well on eBay because there are people that collect them and yeah. do they make art with them. They whatever. have that beautiful Kodachrome look to it. Yeah, it's cool. And that was the one box that kept us at the auction yeah. that, that we. Because it was right for. at the end. And there was a guy who. Uh, started bidding against me and it went up to a hundred and twenty dollars yep and then i dumped out because it was just it was too just too crazy. much it was like and it's funny i i went and talked to him afterwards just to congratulate him like goodbye you know yeah nice. and he was nice like yeah i wanted it's this other thing there were these like banners in there yeah and he was like this is all i uh, wanted and i said well i just want the, the slides. slides he says well you can just take them and then his buddy was like no don't give that stuff away this is the worst when when you have one of those guys who's just yeah. like that could be worth money man which market. it is it is don't say that <laughs> That's rude. Okay, so anyway. And so, you know, then the guy started having second thoughts, and then I was like, how about I split it? It's with yeah, you. Yeah, I'll give you 60 bucks. For the, for the slides, and then there are these other, like, this other thing in there. It was like bookends, bookends or something, right? And I went and got the cash. I gave it to him, and then he only wanted to give me the, the slides, and it's not the, it's bookends, because he kept, I could tell he was a new buyer at an auction yeah that or just a new buyer in general he didn't know what was valuable at he first. he kept thinking he was going to give something away to me that was worth millions of dollars yeah, when you know basically. it wasn't going to be worth that much and yeah. so basically i said no thanks and he was angry and i i was actually kind of angry too so it was not a good uh yeah it was a bummer because it was like if if that guy hadn't have come up and been kind of a dick yeah you would have just gotten them for free. I and mean, like, thanks, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I've given stuff for free to people if I don't have yeah. want the whole box. But it happens. You know, there. Yeah. that's the frustrating thing and the fun kind of stuff that can happen at an auction yeah. is that, like it last night, there's no one bidding against us. So we were getting everything, everything for we five bucks. Uh, wanted for uh, most stuff. But yeah. then there'll be that one thing where just for some it, it reason, there's someone else in the a room that understands why it's valuable yeah. and but the but the problem was that that was such a bummer is if that if those banners were in another box we could have gotten the box of slides for five bucks right so it's kind of sucks when things like that are paired together it, so it happens what but, can you do but i definitely learned from we it used to watch that show storage wars for a yeah while it got annoying then it got boring but you know i learned when to get out of an auction, yeah. you know, or to get out of a a bidding war. Basically, you know? that guy was going to go up to two hundred dollars, and Maybe. or whatever. It seemed like he, it. He I just mean, he he just basically had his hand up the whole time. Right. Like he was just like any bid you give me, yeah. I'm going up. But and you're like, oh, what the hell? But then I feel good. I I bid him up and I made him pay. That's so, right, exactly. You know. Yeah. So so we spent a hundred dollars. I don't think we even said we, that. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, at the end, you know, we got this huge car, and I'm just like. I was expecting it to be kind of expensive, Me and too. we cash out, and it was ninety six dollars, and that includes the buyer's. Yeah, premium. there's a ten percent buyer's premium, right. which basically means that's what the house takes. So, and we could barely fit it in the back of our <laughs> uh, hatchback. hatchback. I mean, it <laughs> we was did it though, full to the brim. Yeah. So, I mean, again, it could be different in different parts of America. Yeah, you know, maybe in different parts, there's a lot more competition and. Maybe there isn't as much stuff. It's kind yeah. of unbelievable. But, I mean, this is an example for us just where there's just almost too much. Yeah. Like, we could have bought more if we uh, wanted to. And also, we when we got home, we sorted through everything. And we got rid of, like, two boxes full of just, like, the junky stuff. Yeah. You know, broken teapots, whatever. Right. Like that. Know, just cheap Chinese-made plates. Yeah, just and... stuff that we don't want to sell. You know, so it's interesting. It's like... We even got just more than we can handle. And we're going to, and we actually aren't throwing anything away. The stuff we don't want, I got in the back of the car and we'll drop off at the... Yeah, the thrift store. At the church thrift store. Someone else, like someone's going to use my old microwave. Actually, like in in a place where we live, you know, it's not a rich, wealthy county. I mean, people, especially on Free Cycle, they go crazy over microwaves. They're just like, I need a microwave, you know? Yeah, it's good. it's Toaster. great. Toaster, stuff like I that. I think what's interesting is that, you know, we've gotten pretty good at this over the past four years or so, four to six years, you yeah. know, about 
going out, buying a bunch of stuff. I, I feel like we're kind of at, we've kind of hit a ceiling where I feel like I want to challenge ourselves to buy like higher dollar inventory. Yeah. You know? Because, you know, we're going through this and I mean, again, we'll make good It's yeah. cash on this. It's just a lot of time and yeah, yeah $30 here, $50 there. Right. I mean, you got to be only grateful. But yeah. It would be interesting. I, I feel like I just it's wonder if we could ever break through that because I just feel like we're too cheap to gamble. Yeah. You know? Well, I think just over time you evolve and move up, and part of it too is you have to have the cash to gamble. Right. So we've been putting so much money into our other house for the past three years that we haven't had a, like an extra five hundred dollars. Right. So why do we say that? I gave you five hundred dollars. Would did you know what kind of item to go gamble That's on a really and spend? Good question. I mean, to me, I thought about it. I don't know. I would. Um, I, 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 I think know. what I would do if I had five hundred dollars in cash and I went to that auction last night, I think I would buy um, some of the prints and paintings and not be afraid to like back mm. down. Like I'm gonna spend seventy five dollars on this, you mm. know, because I know I can make money back. I mean, and then do do you think that those ones might sell for five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I you think have that to be in the presence of quality. Well, you know? right, but I mean, I guess here's is my point is like we're 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 really good at it. we don't like to spend a lot of money in inventory. Right, one dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, you know, yeah. and then we make. You know, twenty, thirty, it's fifty, right. seventy-five dollars. I mean, it's a great profit yeah, margin, you know. Huge. But then the idea would be is that if you're gonna go spend three hundred dollars on an item, you need to make. Is you then want to make two thousand? Yeah. Yeah, or a thousand dollars. Yeah, and, exactly. And I mean, it's not like that's an easy choice because I don't know where those items are. You know, it, right? It, I feel like. We found this niche because there's a lot of people that see an item that might sell for thirty dollars and just think it's junk, or yeah, exactly. or, or or they just don't see the value. It's like okay, it's kind of cool, it's yeah. thirty dollars, but it's too much time, it's too much yeah. effort, you know. But we're willing to make that effort. Right. I feel like the items that you could sell for a thousand dollars, I don't know where those items yeah, are or what they are. I mean, they're. Yeah. Their jewelry, their paintings, or their, their art, yeah. You know, it's. But then when furniture. But then when we have gone to auctions, you know, I don't really, you know, I see like pieces of art, you know, that might be it's worth a thousand dollars, but they sell for almost a thousand dollars, you know, because they have a value right. that people That's want. That's the value, right? Yeah, well, like. Like, people aren't willing to uh, walk away from it. Yeah, know? exactly. No, that's that's a great question. I mean, that's always the question is, how do you bump up the inventory and have access to that inventory? Yeah. You know, like the people who do the estate cleanouts there in New York, in right. D.C., right. in wherever, Where, San Francisco, LA, LA, yeah. Those people have access to yeah rugs paintings, maybe furniture so maybe that's it is that the way to get access to the big dollar items for cheap you have to invest in the entire buyout so right, exactly. it's you have to buy you know the pay five ten thousand dollars for the entire house and yep. then you'll get access to you like it you're tapping into the the main vein, that's when you, you know? sell an oil painting for twenty thousand right. dollars at auction right. like Huh. Or a whole set of silverware for three thousand dollars. Right, because it's pure because, silver. Because we right. we know people like that. Right. We are friends with people like that. Right. You know, and we know that that is exactly correct. Right. Do I want to do house buyouts? Not really. Yeah. I would love to make that kind of money, but I don't have you know ten k to drop on you know right. someone's estate. But I don't know. You start small. Yeah. Buy a small estate, right. sell it all. Right. I don't know. It's just a different, yeah. a different yeah. way of doing business. It's just something I was thinking about while we were at the auction because you yeah. know it, we've kind of got that down. Yeah, you know? like, like, we've got it down to like, an actual science. Where we can spend a hundred dollars on a carload of stuff, yep. and then we're you know we're gonna have to probably spend a week. Yeah, you know, I mean, and I think that's the thing <laughs> that just a lot of people who are new to this don't. It realized like okay, we bought all this stuff for cheap. Cool. It's gonna take us at least a week to get through to it. clean each item, yep. take pictures of it, and a, a list it. And then you know, then it might take two years for all of that <laughs> stuff to to sell because it sells in right. little 
increments, you know. But something sells every day. So. Right. But it, but but the idea of it's for us is we're getting stuff and like Steve on the blog always says, you're just like throwing it into the eBay yep, the pipeline. Uh, furnace. The furnace. It, it, into the pipeline. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so uh that was our auction story. Um <laughs> So our numbers for this week, because we always like to talk about our numbers, not to brag, but just to say, you know, these are our numbers and anyone can go on our blog and we post them every week so you can kind of see the pattern. Yeah. And if you are one of the people like us that chose to become full time doing eBay, you can see that they, we can be con- uh, yeah. assistant. Um, so this week we made about $2,200. Gross. Which is gross. That's it's before all the uh, you know yep. cost, and that's about what, what we made is last week. Yep. And that's about what we love. It's about three hundred dollars a, yep. a day. You that's know? my. That's a great, great price to have per right. day. Right. And so that's forty nine items. So the average price was forty five dollars an item. Yeah. That's a great average price. I mean, it really for two thousand fourteen, which is ending soon. Yeah. That's we've kind of been averaging about 40-ish dollars yeah. per item which is big for us because I think in years as before is more like 20 30 dollars yeah. so, so it's gone up we have been incrementally yep. you know pushing the numbers up and I think part of that is because we only get the best of the best when when we're out there in junk yeah. land yeah. and also because it, you've been good about putting the best price that you think we can get yeah I, mean, I try yeah and you know a lot of things have make offer. Uh, like we've been saying, coats and sweaters right now are on sale. Right. I do not usually think sales matter, but we sold thirteen coats and sweaters this week. Right. Granted, it's freezing in all of the United States. I think States. they would have been. I think they it would have sold, sold anyway. Yeah. yeah, I'm happy to get rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and so yeah, so about twenty it's percent of the stuff we sold this week were coats and sweaters. Yeah. So it's good, and our inventory is dwindling yes our uh, i mean our, our clothing inventory. Uh, our clothing inventory yeah. which is good because we just wanted to kind of it's move some stuff we actually have yeah. some coats to take pictures of but again we're only really focusing on the best kind of name yeah. brand quality stuff whereas back in the old days when when we when we're only doing clothes oh my god we were just buying almost anything we could get our and hands not on. anything but you know like there was a certain style that we would buy but Right. Didn't matter if it was junky or not. I mean, just because we could get it for almost free. Yeah, you know, just it's so cheap. It's filled trash the bags, bags full of these things. Yeah, you know? exactly. Um, and again, it's not because we think clothes are bad. We've talked about this on the blog. I know some of you sell exclusively clothes. It's a good business for sure. Yeah, we just have stopped being kind of passionate. Yeah, about it. So, uh, but. It, they still sell, and I think that's the other thing. So this was a good, solid week. I mean, three hundred bucks a day, like it's yeah, for us, is amazing. That's great. I you know? want that all the time. We're almost all day long. There's some sales. Just you know, it's day. we're selling between like you know six and ten things a day. Yeah, you know, good it's, prices. It's great. Yeah. Um, but again, it can start to feel like it's a normal thing because yes. you know it starts like it's November, goes to December, and into January. It's not normal. Yeah, like, that level of selling. Yeah, I mean, and I think that, you know, we have been selling now for several uh, seasons, I guess seven years now, yeah, yeah, yeah. where we're going to kick into our seventh year. And we know by now that when the slow months come... That's just how it is. It's just, you know? yeah, I mean, it doesn't mean like there's something wrong. Yeah. It just means like that's the cycle of retail. Right. You know? The retail cycle. People are buying yeah. more now. And then when, you know, summertime comes, they, they buy less. Right. That's and, just how it is. And I feel like, you know, it, you just... I think that there's a lot of people who sell on eBay that are not at retailers. Like, we've never sold yeah. in a store. Yeah. I've actually... It's never... I worked in a retail store. I was always a cook. So I was in right. the, uh, a restaurant business, I guess. I have worked in retail stores. Yeah. So, but I feel like it's maybe a lot of people that run e- eBay stores don't it realize, like, that's the way it is yeah. and I know that there's some people on the a blog that have come out and said that they have either owned brick and mortar stores yeah. or they still do right. and I would love for them to get on the blog and kind of help educate you know these a uh, native uh, yeah. eBay s- sellers that their expectations of having consistent c- 
Christmas time sales, sales all, all year time. long is just not a rational yeah. idea. You yeah. Know? What were some of the things we sold this week? Okay, so uh, one cool sale that was at the very beginning of the week was we had this old door that we were selling out of our farmhouse, the other house that we have, and uh, we had it up for a long time, a year maybe, Um, and I was selling it for $200. It's this beautiful, like, beadboard panel door. It's just gorgeous. Hardwood pine. Hardwood pine. Like we refinished a door just like it and it's this gorgeous wood. It comes with the original hardware and everything. I mean the the, the hardware is that like the the, the doorknob. It's like a a glass doorknob. Yeah it's a glass doorknob, a white glass doorknob and like, you know, the the lock and the, you know, hardware that makes it work and everything. And the frame around it. And we had had some questions about it from people who, uh, you know, lived on the East Coast and whatever. And then this guy in, you know, the next big city over from us bought it. Didn't say a word, because it's local pickup. Didn't say a word. And then about a couple hours later, he emailed to ask what the measurements were, which I thought was odd, because I wanted to be like, dude, you already bought and paid for this. Like, I really hope the measurements are right because... <laughs> but he he's arranging to come on Monday, so tomorrow, to come pick it up. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we had talked about this experiment early in 2014 where we were trying to put up a furniture and yeah. big items. It's local like this pickup. huge heavy door yeah. uh, that is a local pickup and it's slowly been paying off. You yeah. Know? So... I mean, we had the storage uh, for it, so it doesn't... You know, it kind of just hides in the corner somewhere, but uh, we're happy to sell this So, the only thing that worries me is he's not that far away. He's about an hour and a half from here. I'm always afraid someone's going to come and be like, oh, I don't really want it. I feel like a smart person would, he's building a new house or building, adding on to a house. Yeah. So, it doesn't really matter what size the door is because he'll just... He'll just build to it. Build the... the, That's a good point. Because... uh, Yeah. But it's a beautiful door and, uh, you know, it's... Interesting, when we bought that uh, rental house, we actually, because we're scavengers, we sold a bunch of stuff out of that house. Yeah, out of that house. Especially because, you know, we we were tearing down, you know, a wall or two. So things, you know, within that needed to get sold or moved out. So that was good. Like taking off pieces of the uh, plumbing, uh, faucets. Yeah, faucets, lights. (laughs) <laughs> uh, you know, vintage hardware because it is an old house. Yeah. And we just were like, well, the wall and the door are gone. So. I mean, guys, I, I mean, <laughs> this is not a joke. We have an old car that's almost about to hit 300,000 uh, miles. And it, it, we know at some point it's got yeah. to just die. Yeah. And I know Ryan keeps talking about she's going to just strip this thing I'm and sell part it, it out. Parts. Right. <laughs> if I can sell it for high, it's one of the, okay, it's an Acura Integra special edition coupe, okay, which is hilarious that we drive that, but it's one of the most, like, stolen cars in the U.S. because people soup them up and do racing cars, so I think I could sell that car for well, my money. Well, my skeptic, I'm skeptical just because it's so old, you know, that just, like, I, I yeah. mean... I feel, you know, the car's dirty and just, like, it's got a lot of just wear and tear. That's I don't true. I don't know. But yeah, I, I, I think we'd be able to... I I think we could sell that car even if it didn't start. Yeah. That's that's my opinion. There but, you go. Because I've seen them in, in our condition in with the mileage that we've had yeah. for, like, wow. pretty good money. Cool. So, so some other things we sold, and it's Ryan is actually going to post another a video on Wednesday... Of yes. the uh, stuff we sold. Yes. We sold some uh, knives. And, and we talked about this It's before. When if you go to estate sales or if you're at yeah. the a thrift store, they'll always pull out if there's a nice grouping of knives. Right. You know, it's in like a block. Those yeah. always sell for a lot. But if you go through there, you'll often find just an, a random, like, really fancy knife. Yeah. Like, made in Germany. Like a uh, bread knife, a cleaver, or like a carving knife. And I learned that from a Mr. Customer yes, a, he sells a service. Yes. Uh, he talked about that when we did an interview with him, that he yeah. sold a lot of these knives. I just started to uh, look, and I remember the uh, first time I brought home a small box of them, yep. individual knives, and, be, be, because, yeah. because I think people buy them because they have a set, one gets lost, or yeah. they bought a set that had one that yeah, didn't missing. have a, 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 a full set. Right. And so people will spend $30, $40 for a single knife. How much did I, I sold a, a, a vintage French uh, cleaver, 
like this chrome cleaver and um, 50 bucks. I think I sold it for $50. Yep. I did not pay more than a dollar for that thing because yep. it looks like because it had a cover on it, a paper cover that had grease and it was worn. And I mean, the people were like, that looks like junk. Yep. 50 bucks. And I had two of them. So yep. I sold one before. So I made $100 on those. We sold a pair of it's Ferragamo boots. Yes. Yeah, so these Ferragamo boots, we, we've talked about this on the blog before. Many people have mentioned this. Every time you find a pair of Ferragamos, most of the time, they're a very narrow size. Like AA or AAA. Or like quadruple A, which right. means very narrow. So these were uh, not size 9 AA boots. And they were gorgeous because they're high heel boots and they're like wingtip style, like equestrian kind of boots. I had them up for two fifty. I think she no. I had them up for two twenty five, and she offered one fifty, and I was thrilled because I think I paid like well, three bucks for them. Because for some reason we had this. I think we talked about it when we were in Austin, and uh, we started going to all these estate sales. Yeah, in and Austin. for some it reason, it was like Ferragamo heaven. I at, found so many Ferragamo at different, and and it was just coincidence because different. it was that it's different estate sales because we always go into people's bedrooms. Yeah, their We love estate sales. You go into the at closets, and most people are buying for themselves. So they, so if something's a weird size, they aren't gonna buy it but we were buying boxes of ferragamos you know in the box these yep. boots so yeah so we had two pairs of those boots and uh hopefully the other pair will sell too because i've had them. actually these these boots were not from the estate sale i've had them for a long time and then we so. sold off the uh, last of it's my sleeping bags yes thank goodness i've talked about this when i was in when we were into uh it's military yeah a surplus and we're not doing that anymore but I bought a huge, big lot of sleeping bags, yeah. and uh, it took about two years now to sell them all. I don't know. Yeah. For some reason, the first year, no one was buying them, and uh, this year, I know why. everyone was buying them. Because we had them up for $75, uh -huh. and this year we had them up for 50 uh -huh. So we hit the right price point, and yeah. we sold them all. Yeah. I, so. I think that's one reason why we got out of the uh, it's military a surplus, because there's too much competition so out much there. Competition. There are a certain guys, especially on eBay and even just on their own uh, websites, they buy from the same place that I do, and or I bought from the same yeah, place it's as, government liquidation. as they did. And they just buy in much more bulk than I do, and so they could just kill the price. Yeah, they kill I mean, the price. $50 for these nice sleeping bags. With a, with a Gore-Tex cover and right. a stuff sack. So I bet I bet we were in for twenty dollars each one. So we yeah. made thirty dollars on on an, on each bag set. But that's not a great profit, you know. Unless unless it's you're just buying truckloads every week. Yeah, and it's just, just volume. Volume, and that's not you know we're not a volume kind of people. So know? part of that sale too, separate from it, is because we had all those sleeping bags, we had all these compression sacks, right. which are stuff sacks. So we listed those by by themselves because we had like a whole, we had like fifty extra of those. Assuming that you know a person buys a a sleeping bag somewhere and just yeah. it needs a nice nylon sack for it. So this one guy we had. We have two different kinds, and one we had 18 of them. This guy bought all 18. That was a big sale. So that was like over $200 for those. So that was a nice big sale of military stuff. Yeah. And when we were doing the it's military stuff, we seemed to sell a lot of stuff in the uh, winter time. Like uh, yeah, uh, and it seemed like they were going to places where they were where they would uh, rent stuff to tourists. You yeah. know, like hunters or adventurers right. or whatever. Because right. they so, want it in bulk. They're right. like, I need you know two hundred of these, right. and we're like, okay. <laughs> so it was great. Yeah, but, that's uh, happened before. So other news is this week is for us. We got actually our TRS back. Yeah, top rated seller status, which I was very surprised that which we got that back. We did not expect to get back because we'd been away for so long and our, our shipping had been, yeah, you know, so poor because yeah. if it's not a uh, next day, they, they don't really count you for your... Right. So we now get our 20% which is great. discount and it's good because... Now's the time when we want that twenty it's percent because we're a making yeah. good profit. You yeah. Know? So we can save we're saving up to two hundred dollars a month on our fees. So part of that, um, you know, getting our top rated seller back is me yep. 
<laughs> being a crazy person. You and, are crazy. No, I mean, like, yeah. I am being obsessive about defect rating. Right. Uh, I was on the phone twice this week to get defects removed. Now, one of the times I was on the phone for a different reason, and I waited on hold for so long, I think it was 45 minutes before anyone answered my phone call, that I was like, I waited so long that I better get a defect removed. Like, I better ask to get a defect removed. Like, state my case, see if they'll do it. And it worked. I got two... De- Did I get two defects removed this week? Two defects. Some of our uh, neutral feedback got taken yeah. away. And and these were things that Ryan had asked for. It's before, but then just had tried again randomly. And they said it, yes. It really is a strange kind of random... Basically, uh, I'm trying uh, to get the defect rating so that we have a good buffer. Like, every time I call, I'm trying to just argue for one of them. Because then if something goes wrong with some random customer, you have more of a buffer. Well, the other it's nice thing is because we've been... It's the holidays. Our sales are up. They judge you in two different ways. If you sell under 300 items in yes. in a three-month period, they judge you for the entire 12 months. So yeah. all the all the its defects over a 12-month period is counted against you. Now, since we've sold so much lately, we're now being judged over a three-month right. period because we've sold more than 300 items in that three-month period. Right. So really, we've had a really good three months, so we don't have a lot of defects. It's like 0.56 or something like that. If you're new and hearing this, it's like, God... It's it's kind of like yeah it's just it's so on one hand ridiculous. none of this matters you know as long as you're doing a good job you know it's all good for those of you who have been around for a while it's just one of those things where like you're probably it's like me there's a rating a system so I want to do well you know right, it's just right, like that right. thing and they give you that twenty percent and yeah. we actually get the extra. Five percent. Five percent because we have the holiday returns turned on. Yeah. Which it will see if people are still it's returning things to us at the end of January. Yeah. You know? But I think part of it too is not to get obsessed to the point of <laughs> you just driving yourself crazy. I basically was like calling for another reason. It was like, what the heck? I'll just try. Yeah. You know, and and I was very persistent about it. I was like, oh, you won't remove that right. defect. What about this other one? It's cool to care. It's just not cool when it stops you from yeah. working. You from know? being productive. So if this was stuff were to stop us from a listing and you know finding stuff out there in the world, then it would be a negative thing. You know. The other thing was so this week we we went back and forth between taking photographs of a winter stuff and a listing. And now that I list as well, uh, you know, we're double a listing. And what I've been focusing on now are pants. I took pictures of all, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I elicited all of our shirts. Yes. Now I'm listing all these folders of pants that we took pictures <laughs> of. Yeah. And I love it because it's simple. Yeah, it's easy. It's good for a guy like me to do that. But I do, I sit there, I'm on my third week. It's probably going to be another, week or two of doing pants right and i'm just like is it really worth yeah. it yeah you know it's i mean always the question it really is a good feel i mean a good question to ask because you know this is three four weeks of yeah of, of time of, of my time yeah i mean the, the question is that we get this stuff for almost free yeah practically free just trash bags full of clothes that that's great it doesn't cost us anything and then it will make 20 30 dollars a pop, you know? right? And so I just, you know, it, but then it's going to take, you know, a year for it all, right, to sell. And it's just a really, it kind of goes back to it's what I was asking at the top of our show was, do we want to continue to sell right. stuff that's really cheap or free and make good profit, but it's not crazy profit, right? You know, it's it is kind of a crazy question because you're like, we got it for free. I mean, basically for pennies. Yeah, it's just, it, it seems almost crazy to be like, is it worth it to even make money off these? <laughs> yeah, of course it's worth it, but it's like, you know, could you do less work right. and make more money? Could Or the same amount of money right. with less work? 
could we work smarter? Right, you know? right. Like, it's Chris the coin guy, who I hope is hearing this, who I talk to sometimes. Yeah. Uh, we did an interview with him, and where he's... I mean, I don't know his uh, numbers of his uh, volume, but I'm assuming he might only be buying 20 coins a month, you know? Mm, interesting. Sell, you know, buys them for two, $300, sells them for $600, right. you know? So if he makes 20, makes, you know, times $300, you know, he's making $6,000, you know? Yeah. I, I, I don't know if that's his uh, numbers or not, but yeah. it's the idea of he spends a lot more time seeking out these individual items. Yeah willing to put down more cash on them and right, exactly. sell them for more. Yeah. Part of me does, though, like the kind of wide-ranging scavenging. You yeah, know? just it makes things more interesting. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's just more fun to list. I mean, granted, you're listing like hundreds of pairs of pants, and that might get a little crazy, but there's a variety in pants, too. You know, you're, you're, you're yeah. always seeking out. You're not just like... It's all jeans all the time. You know, you're seeking out, like, uh, like a pair of these vintage hunting pants sold the other day. Those were so yeah. awesome, you know? It's 40 bucks. It was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So. But I think it's just, again, goes back to it's what we're passionate about. So I think we're like other people. I mean, because we have them, I don't want to get rid of them. So we're right. pushing now. through. But I just think we're going to really do our best to not uh, buy anymore. Yeah. Uh, now that being said, like this week we got two offers on some really high dollar items, that it really puts us in a quandary sometimes. You yes. Know? We yes. had these items like one one was worth like we we had uh, for twelve hundred dollars. This like a vintage. <laughs> it's like something you would see in a ski a ski lodge lodge where it's like a banner with all these vintage patches from different ski lodges around the world you know no it's around europe, europe. so it's all swiss and german and netherlands and french yeah it's incredible i think it's like six feet tall right. it's got a bell right. at the bottom i'm just like it's it's truly one of amazing. a kind and we bought it for by basically 25 euro yeah I think. so like it's 40 bucks and you know it's just it's one of those things like how do you it's prices and uh, ryan's really it's good at this and she's like i'm gonna price it for 12 i want 1200 dollars for and this someone thing. offered us we've had it for a year now someone offered us 300 dollars, which is if a you think great about offer it, crazy money but it's low compared to what our expectation is and then right. we have like we're just in that you know it's that it's quandary of do our are we willing to hold it for another right. 12 months? Right. And the answer was yes. So yes. we countered high. I think we countered at 750. I was right. like if he <laughs> if he said yes to 700, I'd be thrilled. Or even if he countered at 500. Yeah, I'd be like hell yeah. But I think I got a little sentimental about this piece because I was like you will never find a piece like this. Right. I'm not giving it away for $300. <laughs> it is insane it's beautiful and again this goes to what we've been talking about though so when you deal with these high dollar items i just don't know if they would sell as quickly right, you know? right. so if we sell this great profit but right. you know could we find this as many high dollar items and sell them often enough i mean what what we sell are like the items that people do buy yeah it's more often so the other high dollar item was uh we have this seven foot tall hand carved wooden totem pole that we got in an auction for nothing it, actually we got it at the auction we went to yeah, last, last night, night but we bought it a year and a half a ago, ago and it's uh it's, it's, awesome. it's, it's cool it's just again very weird and it's unique yeah. and we have I think we have 300 on it. Yeah. And this guy offered 75. But I was just like, no, <laughs> 75 is not enough. Yep. It's got to be over 100. And so we. So we, we countered, we, we, I think. It's countered and he said no. Yeah. So, so. Yeah, good to go. But uh, sometimes you just have to stand your ground on the high price items, I feel. Right. If, if that's what you want to do. So. Yeah. Customer issues this week. We didn't really have any. I mean, I don't we, think we had any customers. No returns. I mean, it's a. We had one person send something back. Oh, we did. Okay, I forgot that Adidas jacket that I showed in the video. He's sending it back because it doesn't fit. So that's not too bad. But he says he's paying for he's the paying for the shipping. shipping so that's so good. it's all good. But uh, you know, it's just it's one of those things. We got all these returns and issues after we had 
come back and you know yeah. nail those 200 items and then it just gets quiet and i yeah. find like it just happens and and i know people you know this stuff can really grind on us all but it just i feel like it just comes in waves yeah like it's not it's not personal against us right. it's just sometimes we get a bunch of you know it's problems and yeah. then sometimes it gets real quiet and then they'll come up again and just that's just it's, it's okay it's built in you have to deal with that stuff and that's just that's just the nature of <laughs> selling online right oh i did want to mention too before we move on i think i sold three or four items on bonanza this week so that was kind of cool yeah a pair of shoes a random kitchen canister from the 50s again that's it's chris the coin guy kind of spread that uh, meme throughout all of us yeah i know a, a, a other people turn their store on as well yeah and it's cool i mean just like he said during the it's christmas a uh, season if you have a big store you're gonna get three four things sell yeah and that's cool but people you know i think the guy started this site as an ebay killer yeah and you know, eBay it's been around since 2006 it's yeah. never gonna compete with ebay yeah. i mean it's been around long enough where it you'd know by yeah now. i mean yeah you know it's cool to get the extra sales but i think because people are finding it through google shopping so they're looking right. for stuff and they find it which is great the only thing you have to remember is you need to end the listing on ebay right. if you if it's not an item in quantity you have to make sure you end it because if someone else buys it and you already sold it on bonanza so does it automatically scrape our ebay store so yes. so it's when we put yep items you up. can manually refresh it mm -hmm. and say update it if you like just listed stuff that day but i think within a day uh, within 24 hours, it, it refreshes. Gotcha. Or it might be sooner than that, which you would hope, because if you sold stuff, you don't want it for sale on Bonanza at the same time. You yeah. Know? So, it's cool. And the great the reason why we uh, like it and why we don't sell any place else other than this other site is because they basically sucked in all of our eBay store yeah. automatically, and we didn't have we to, didn't do, have any to do anything. We didn't have to do anything. Unlike... <laughs> Unlike if we were on a, another platform like Etsy, Etsy Amazon, you have, have to re list everything oh, yeah. and remanage a store. Yeah, so it's crazy. I like the idea of like low is low work. Yeah. So Paul from Rydal Relics, he's someone who comments on the blog a bunch. He wrote. He's a, our Hollywood. Guy. Yes, he's in Hollywood. <laughs> um, he said that he accidentally switched two items, uh, two different shirts, and sent them to the wrong people. Like, he swapped the address labels by accident. And he said that he contacted USPS, and they said it, you have the ability to try to intercept a package and, and get it resent either back to you or the corrected address. Well, I mean, so they have a... A, a service that yes. it, you pay for, I think it was like 11 12 bucks, bucks, 12 yeah. bucks, and then they'll somehow be able to try and find those two items and send them back to you. Yeah. And in this case, you said, I guess they weren't able to f uh, find them, but, uh, right. you know. But the other thing, too, is one of them was going to global shipping, so he called eBay to see if he could get it sent back to him or if they open the packages to make sure it's the right thing. And if it's not the right thing, do they send it back? The first customer service rep said, yes, that's correct. So he's like, great, no problem. You know, I'll wait for it to come back to me. And then he called the second day just to double check. And they were like, oh, no, we don't do that. Only on big items do we open the boxes and check. So he's like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> so but, that, that was interesting information. But that is interesting if you Google it and we'll, uh, we'll uh, link to it. Yeah. The, uh, USPS has this... Uh, yeah, interception service. service. Yeah. So I'll link to it. I have to look at it, but they won't guarantee it. It's right. just they're gonna try at the you know the next stop to you know right. get it sent back to you. And then actually, Kate, who's on the blog, uh, she actually linked or sent us a link to this cool story. There's a I think it was in Pennsylvania. I'll link to the article. Uh -huh. It's amazing to see the it's photos of this a family. Wow. I guess they bought a shoe store, an old shoe store, and someone had basically just closed their, a shoe store down and just left. 
and wow. the the store still has all the old shoes from the uh, 70s, I guess. I wow. mean, it's packed and uh, oh my god, incredible! So brand new in the box vintage shoes and uh, brand new. I'm looking at the photos. Yeah, it's there's just there's like a whole. Amazing. It's it's almost like it, that would pay off all of our bills for th- two or three years. I mean, it's it's hundreds of. And what's pairs. amazing is most of the shoes are in the boxes, so they have no dust on them. Right. They're like you get them; they look brand new. Right. Incredible. So I really I wonder if the people that bought the store it's no, it's what they have. But anyway, it's one of those so like cool. it's one of those like stories that happens every so often where someone like buys a Picasso at a yard sale you know it's just uh, that person (laughs) will be me someday damn it so okay I wanted to bring this up real quick and I don't want this to sound like an advertisement but uh, for us it is a huge big deal for us my biggest uh, surprise of 2014 was Ting yes the new phone service right was that you know we were going through our bills to see, can we cut down any of our bills? Because the less money we have to pay in bills, the less money we have to actually make. And, the less and work, work, the less work we have so, to do. So, you know, it, we've talked all about this, you know. So our phone bill was the big one. We were, we were paying about... huge. $200 a month. 200 bucks for, for both of us. It was yeah. basically 100 bucks each, 18 Ti phones, Insane. you know. Like, we, it needed a lot of... Yeah, anyway. And so... I had Googled it, and I found this thing called Ting, and it's basically Sprint. Yeah. It's weird. It's in, it's a small company that buys phone service from Sprint, Sprint and they... resell it. Yeah, it's weird. And uh, so our bills are now average of about $50 for, for both, both of us. us. Right. And like sometimes, total, the end, $50 a sometimes month. Sometimes it's even cheaper. And they only charge you for what we it used. So we're home a lot just on our Wi-Fi on our phones. We're using nothing. We're barely using anything. And if we need to make phone calls, we just do it over the computer. Right. And we traveled a lot it's this year, and it's worked great. And yeah. when we need more a service, they just charge us a bit more. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't think our bill's ever been more than $68 for two of us. Yeah. And actually, we just got this email from there were. There's actually 14 of you out there that have <laughs> switched because I know because it's you. It used our code, and uh, you know, um, so 14 of you. And it's one of you uh, emailed us just it's recently and said the, the same thing. Like, uh, so anyway, yeah. I only bring this up because I guess this is the bit of an advertisement. Up until December 1st, so it's like. The next In a week, few days, yeah. if you sign up for Ting, they'll give you a hundred dollars either towards a new phone or towards your phone. Wow, towards service. your bill. So if you're actually an individual person, that might be free phone service for three months, and ah. then and then we get a uh, we get some uh, money too towards our bills. So that's always good for us. But uh, we'll wow. put we'll put our link in this blog post, uh, but. And there's other services out there. It's not just Ting. I mean, there's like Track Phone, Republic Wireless. There's it's Republic Wireless. Stuff like that. Because it's cheap. It's like forty bucks a month. Basically, it's these different independent companies that buy phone service from yeah. their. It's Verizon, and so I guess yeah. if you just pick, it's whatever a service you're interested in. There's going to be one of these small companies. Yeah. We personally just like Ting. I love their website. They yeah. have an app that just shows me in real time my I uh, usage and where my bill is. Which is so helpful. You're like, okay, my bill is changing in two days. I don't want to go over the, you know, they have like small, yeah. medium, large, extra large limit. It's like, oh, I don't want to go over the medium yeah. limit, so I got to make sure I don't like download a photo while Seriously. I'm in town, you yeah. know? <laughs> but I mean, really, like that's, that's I think one of the big s- surprising things that we're not saving in. A hundred and fifty dollars a, a month. month. Yeah, that's crazy. God, I just feel like that's like a, my student loan bill yeah. right there. I feel like know? a ding dong for spending. So I much think money. those companies <laughs> did not exist until recently. Yeah. I mean, I had never heard of these different companies. You know, within the last year or so. Yeah, I think Ting is very new. Yeah, it, whatever service it you go with, if you're just doing your a service through, it's one of the big companies. It's Verizon, AT and T. You can do it's better. So yes, just do some it's research and do what works for you. If you want to try Ting, we'll put the link on our site. Um, so we had a question about our videos that we've been posting because people have said that 
it's taking forever to download in iTunes because I make a link so that it does, you know, come through the feed through iTunes. But I'm making an HD video, so it's like 700 megabytes. Mm. But maybe we could make a smaller a video that would go in the feed. Go on iTunes. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. I just, we heard one person say, it's taking forever yeah. to download. I guess, too, I didn't think about it. So those of you that subscribe to this in iTunes, does the a video download to it your phone, and then it, you can... Uh, well, I'll watch the a video in some kind of app or something. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know, know how it works. Well, so I always curious. picture people using iTunes on their computer, but right, yeah, probably that's a good question, right? Because you know, we're just more interested in the fact that there's a video, a, a YouTube, a video on our blog that you can watch. So, yeah, so there's a we don't want to annoy subscribers on iTunes. Yeah, but I do want the subscribers on iTunes to see that we posted a video too. So right. I'm trying to. Make sure everybody sees it. Okay, the other thing is, don't forget, because it's kind of the holidays. I mean, now is really like the big rush is just about here. You should order boxes from the post office yes. now. Go on their uh, website. Yeah. Because if you wait and if you run out of boxes, yeah, you're gonna they be very often don't have them or they get delayed because of all the... Yeah. Uh, shipping. So we actually have ordered extra I have so boxes. Many boxes. Yeah. yeah. The other thing too is because it's almost the end of the year, so the end of your tax expenses, buy any office supplies or shipping supplies that you need. Yeah. If you're low on that stuff, go buy it because you're you wanna, you know, write that off on your taxes, you know, soon before December thirty first. Yep. And also, these are all like kind of it's random things we have down here. So on the blog, on the sidebar, uh, Ryan made a feed, an RSS feed, just of the blog comments. Just yes. because we're getting a lot of comments and I know, I don't know, we're just trying to think of different ways without making a, a forum to let people be able to participate. And so there's a feed, so it, you could subscribe to the feed of comments and just kind of read them in a yeah, stream. Yeah, so my favorite way to read the comments is through my email, but because I'm the blog administrator, every comment gets emailed to me anyway. So I was thinking, you know, if people wanted to read the feed just through their email, like when they wake up in the morning, you can just um, subscribe to the comments through email. So on the sidebar, you'll be able to see that if if anyone wants to do that. And there's, you know, I know there's all kinds of horror stories and we've experienced them in different communities that we've had where comments are getting annoying, bad, you know. Overwhelming. Just too, it's noisy. I feel yeah. like comments are still pretty you know solid and we're yeah. getting a lot of good info i learned a lot we're about to talk about some of it so yeah. one more thing that i put on the sidebar that we mentioned in the last post was we started making mugs on Spreadshirt. that's right so um i had wanted to do this for a very long time because what would be perfect to me is to be sitting at my desk or with my laptop with my cup of coffee, with a mug that says, always be listing. <laughs> so I made that mug, and I made a whole bunch more that people suggested, which were hilarious, of stuff that we say on the blog and people say in the comments. They're almost like, I like them there because they're motivational, but they're like angry motivational, <laughs> like this, shameful motivational. You know? no, they're shameful, but they're like... <laughs> Like, like ass just, kickers like, or something. Shut up and list. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't be a hoarder. So don't be a hoarder. Those are good. Yeah. Um, so go check that out. Those are funny. And then just another little bit of news. Uh, I talk about this guy. It's Mr. Money, a mustache. Yeah. Uh, he has his pretty popular blog now. It's basically on like personal finance. Extreme retirement. Right? Yeah. And he's not like, you know... <laughs> He's not a flashy guy. No. He's more about like don't spend a lot yeah. and live simply yeah. but live well. And he's figured out this whole thing and I've talked about it where here's the, the, the deal. He was an engineer and yeah. his wife I think did, did real estate. Yeah. And in their 20s into their early 30s, they were making upwards of like $175,000 a year combined because they yeah. had good incomes yeah. and they basically saved over 50% of their income every year and were saving it paid off their house and they amassed I think the magic number for them was $625,000 cash right they put it in index funds which made four and a half its percent yeah on average so basically every year they could get $25,000 just from the interest from right. that 
and they live simply enough where they could live off of that. Yeah. Obviously, and so that means they didn't have to, it's work anymore. Obviously, it doesn't mean that they don't work. Right. It's just now they actually seem to make a lot more on their blog and other things. They can work on things they want to work right. on. So anyway, I'm linking to another article about him and his uh, lifestyle and the its mentality around that. I think it's really cool. I think for people like us, though, we've never really had that a luxury to have $100,000 jobs. Yeah. And I think that's the only flaw in kind of his worldview is sure. like there's a lot of us that don't have access to make that kind right. of income. And I think that's where we kind of come at it. I love what he does in his its mentality. What we do is though, instead of having to make $100,000 a year, it's like, well, it lived the frugal it lifestyle, pay off all debt and right. save. But while you're making its money, do it in the way we do it. And that's right. like- You have your freedom. Selling like, like a scavenger. Yeah, you know? exactly. And he he subscribes to the same like lifestyle as us, where it's like basically like living like a scavenger, where you're like, I don't need a fancy car, I don't need like the biggest house on the block, right. I don't need to, to spend money on to take vacations X, y, and to Z. Hawaii. Yeah, and, like I you know. sure I would love to go to Hawaii, but you know it it's just the basic things in life. You're like just down and dirty, like just you know. But I think the article's good because it kind of brings up the bigger picture of there seems to be a movement in the uh, middle class, which I guess, you know, a a lot of us are still, it's middle class. Right. uh, Kind of. uh, It's working, it's middle class. There's a sense of like, we don't trust the uh, system anymore. And instead of spending, 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 a lot of us now are starting to bring that back, being super frugal, saving, paying off debt, because it's like almost we're preparing for what seems like the inevitable next crazy crash just because of Wall Street's so kooky, you know? Exactly. And uh, I think that that's good, you know? Uh, It's, you know, it's an interesting, but you can do it in a way where it's not like we're all starving and being unhappy. It's like, we all have these like crazy good lives because we own our time. Right. And there's all this excess and it's good. Yeah. Like you can, if you cut out a lot of the, you know, crap that you don't need and, you know, think you need and, you know, whatever, all that stuff. It's just like, we're, we're doing pretty good. Yeah. And I guess the other, the other interesting part of that, they're saying like, it's such a kooky economy because the American economy depends on people like us to buy on credit and to buy new cars all the time and to buy new clothes all the time. Like that's what keeps the economy going. And yet, there's a movement to not spend so much, so it's like yeah, this, it's, uh, <laughs> it's this double-edged yep, sword, yep, you know? totally. Well, I feel like we need to have a different kind of economy. Yeah. You know, not based on everyone updating their car every two years. Oh, <laughs> I, I think it's unnecessary. I agree, yeah. I mean, he's all about never buy a new car because yeah. you can buy a four-year-old car at... 60% of the price. Uh, yeah, there's exactly. n- there's It's never a need to buy a new car unless it's purely about status. We, we learned a couple things in in the comments. It's this week, and, and actually some of these things are pretty amazing for us and I think are kind of fundamentally changing how we're doing our store. Just from a simple, dumb comment. So, <laughs> restocking fees. Yes. I think I had heard about this. I think an eBay rep even told us we should be charging a, a restocking fee because we were complaining about getting some items returned to us. Right. And we just kind of ignored it. And then on the blog this week, it's Brian yes. said he puts a 20% it's restocking yeah. fee. So he doesn't care if someone returns something. So that means if someone buys something for $10, they have to pay him $2 to send to it re- back. return it. That's really monumental. I mean, that changes yeah. everything. Yeah. Well, basically, it changes us not bitching and complaining about people returning stuff because we're like, okay, it's covered. So it almost makes you automatic. It returns a a mute point. So they sure they can send it back. They can blame us. We'll pay all the right a shipping fee, but then it will automatically give them a a refund. But as long as we have the it restocking yeah. fees checked, it will give them a refund minus, minus a twenty percent. And twenty it's percent like on a thirty dollar item basically covers the right. uh, 
a shipping cost. So it's almost yeah. like I'm surprised. I guess eBay doesn't want to really like advertise that. But they've said it on the phone before to me. I know, but they could, you know, do blog posts about it. But they don't want it to. Basically, look bad. it kind of evens it all yeah. out. Buyers think they aren't having to pay to ship, but a seller gets a, a restocking fee, so it all kind of evens yeah. out. Yeah. So anyway, we just did that on our whole store, and we haven't, you know... Yeah, it, we haven't experienced anything. Hasn't happened yet, but yeah. uh, that kind of takes the weight off my mind, and now I don't care. Yeah, people, I'm just like, you know, fine, return it. It's a defect, I guess, if they say I did something wrong, but who cares? It's yeah. Just, it's, I, I like this guy who sells a lot. He sells mainly clothes. Right, He's got yep. a good... Uh, his mentality. Yeah, he's got it, a great you know. mentality. And he sells a lot, too. So right. that's a good... I think the other thing is, I, I think I didn't mention this last week. I'm not sure when she put the comment on, but Alinda, uh, a longtime commenter, she said that she sold a $2,100 wood sculpture. Or, yes. sorry, she sold a wood sculpture for $2,100. That she bought at an estate sale. For $50. For $50. Now, her and her friend, when they shop the estate sales together they'll split the profit of anything so she's splitting that profit with her friend i would never do that <laughs> <laughs> you split the profit with me is yeah, what you do but we live in the same house yeah but a thousand dollars is still an amazing yeah. profit to yeah. make you know and so we just got to give a shout out to it linda because we've never made that i've never sold anything item. that high but to me though it's also a good example of if you're a good scavenger yep and she was willing to spend a little more. Bucks, yep. She had the eye. I don't think it, she knew how it's much it would sell for. But she even said that she does like it's we do. She put it on buy it now with a make offer. I think she did make offer, but she put it on buy it now, and she just and she put it up for a crazy price. Yeah, just to see, just to see, and, and look you know what, what happened. There you she go. Sold it. Yeah, there's there's really no. Yeah, that's so, a great story. So that's you know that's good. And then we got a uh, a message from this guy, a uh, Lance, yes, who's out of England, who's a seller over there, and he yes. said something in this email that I thought was so good. He said, "Profits are better than a uh, wages. That a uh, wages may pay the bills, it's but profit has a capacity to change your life." <laughs> that's now that's really very amazing. like motivational, but I do see it that way. I mean, if I was just getting an hourly wage, it's just like, yeah. it's, it's it's not very fun. Like, no, it's not fun. I know it's like very, like, it's predictable. Like, I know I'll get a certain amount at the end of the month to pay my bills. That's awesome, you know. Yeah. But it is kind of fun to do it this way where we're getting profit on items that we put its work into. So the more as we work, very often, the more money it we make. Yep. And it's just... It's much more motivating. To yeah, me, it's motivating. You know? It's more stimulating. Right. I, you know what I mean? It, we've had stimulating jobs in right. offices. We both have, you know, very cool television jobs. But oh, that can only it, go so Some of far. it wasn't very no, cool. No, some of yeah. it wasn't cool. And that's right. why we left. But, um, yeah, I just feel like, you know, going to the auction last right. night... That's right. so fun. I mean, yeah. that's my job, <laughs> right. literally. But, you know, like when I was talking about, you know, I've spent three weeks now or about to be three weeks yeah. at listing like pants, pants and, and you know, I was trying to do the, it's it's numbers on it, the amount of hours it took to photograph everything and now put them up. I mean, I might make only $15 an hour, you know, like, I mean, so if yeah. I, if I, I look at it that way, you know. A wage job might in some ways be better, but there is, it's just different in the sense of I'm working for it's myself right. and, and I have control over it's your that. time. It's profit, you know? You sat on, on a chair with your laptop, with coffee, with a cat, right. and cat next to you. Right. And, you know, and like I have the choice, do I dump these at 10 bucks a piece? Do I hold on to them and try and sell them for 30? You know, yeah. there's just, it's much more exciting than just like, I'm just stuck at an office somewhere. So. And especially when stuff sells, you're like, it worked. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah. And so I guess that just to kind of it's wrap up here, I really do like the kind of group of people out there that have kind of joined our blog. I mean, really, it's gotten much bigger than I ever expected. Much bigger. Yeah. I mean, uh, the level of commenting, I think we had like 260 comments on one of the things. Granted, that's... I don't, a, really? Uh, yeah. 210. One of them has 210 comments. That is not 210 different people, right. but it's 
you know, people but, talking back and forth. There's a level us of talking interest. With people. And, and you know, I, I, it's kind of at the point where I really don't want anyone else to find out about. Yeah, it. Like, like, like this is the good stuff. Like I like this crew. Yeah. Everyone's it's respectful. Yeah, and I feel like. Just so you guys know, let's keep this a secret. <laughs> let's all make a Don't lot of tell money. anyone about this podcast. Yeah, let's all make some its money and share you know our 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 hints and tips and let's all save a lot of money too, just so yeah. we don't have to ever work for any anybody else, you know. And and I guess it's my dream would be is that all of you are you all make enough its money where you can buy second homes somewhere yep. or Attach a nice little guest house to at your house, and then let us come and visit you. <laughs> in different this is parts. a selfish endeavor That's here. Right. So we have a place to come and stay in Scavenge, anywhere in the world in Scavenge. Yeah, exactly. And, great, and you know, and we have a place here too. So yeah. it's all good. We're we're going to end now. We aren't going to answer any questions because this has been a long one for us. But we did actually do something new. We announced it on a Wednesday, but let's talk about it now. So. We added a phone number to our sidebar, yes. and that way we'll never pick up. It's just a voicemail. Yeah. And that way y you can actually call and leave a message or comment, Yes, and that means that we may play it on this podcast. And that way we thought it would be cooler of a question and answer. Where you can actually hear people. Yeah, so that way you can hear how people are asking the a question, and, and we can get to hear you. And this is all kind of like from our love of... Uh, the a savage a love cast and savage like, because yeah. if you ever listen to savage love cast and if you haven't it is very much not safe for work if you yeah. don't work at home right he's <laughs> great because he will he has a voicemail uh that he you know records every week and he just plays people's messages and but, he'll call people back we're not going to call you back yeah but but it's much more to me, it's much more interesting than us is reading the comments. So we've actually had two people call us so far and leave us its questions, which are cool. And, uh, you know, we hope that uh, you guys will do the same. You don't have to say it's your name. It can be totally an, an, an anonymous. But uh, I think know. Google Voice will ask for your name. Um, when I called to test it, they're like, state your name so we can try yeah. to reach this person. You can say anything. You can say Bugs Bunny. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to say your name in the question either. It can be totally anonymous. Yeah. Here's the phone number, which yeah. I haven't said yet. Go for it. The phone number is 540-407-8486. And I'll repeat that so you can write it down. 540-407-8486. And I'm going to put it on the sidebar, so it will be there on the sidebar of the blog. Um, yeah. So you can either write us an email, or you can call and leave a voicemail, yeah. and we'll try to answer ha it on the blog. Have some fun, come on! And so if anyone, and so if uh, people could call and leave some it's questions, we will uh, do another podcast later. It's this week. That's yeah, and just answer a, questions. Uh, it's question and answer, or make comments, or you know all yeah. that stuff. Okay, guys. Uh, Thanks for joining us today, <laughs> and uh, have a good holiday week. And this podcast is ending in three, three two, two one. one. Bye.